Welcome back students. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to acid-base theory, especially the Bronsted-Lowry definition. There are three definitions that we utilize in chemistry for acid-base theory, but in organic chemistry, we usually stick with the Bronsted-Lowry definition for the majority of what we're talking about. Bronsted-Lowry definition looks at acid-base reactions with respect to proton transfer. Remember that a proton is a hydrogen that is positive, so it's a hydrogen without its electron. What happens in Bronsted-Lowry definition is your acid donates a proton and your base accepts a proton. Another way to look at it is your base removes a proton from the acid, which kind of releases its proton. So the acid is letting go or releasing its proton and the base is coming in and it is abstracting or removing that proton. In general chemistry, you saw very basic proton transfer reactions like the one I've drawn here. What happens in organic chemistry is that, again, your base is going to take off the proton. So I'm going to highlight this proton on HBr and show where it's going in the product. What we can do is draw arrows to say a pair of electrons from this oxygen comes in and grabs or abstracts this proton from HBr. And when that happens, that proton, which is a hydrogen without its electron, goes to the oxygen, and that's where it ends up over here. And notice how I drew that bond in green because I'm showing that the pair of electrons from oxygen is now forming a bond with the hydrogen. Then what happens is these electrons on the bromine go onto the bromine, so the HBr bond breaks and the electrons go directly onto the bromine, so the one pair of electrons on the bromine are from that HBr bond. What we're showing here is the movement of the electrons to help us recognize how the reaction is happening. In these reactions, we have what are called acid-base pairs or conjugate acid-base pairs. Your acid-base pairs are pairs of molecules or ions that are interconverted between a proton transfer. If we look at this, again, I want to highlight where the hydrogen is that got removed and where it ended up. When we consider our acid-base pairs, let's first look at the left-hand side and decide what is the acid and what is the base. The H that I have highlighted is being donated, so this is going to be your acid, whereas the water is going to be your base, because what happens is the base comes in, it pulls off this proton, the electrons between the hydrogen and the oxygen go on to the oxygen. Now the thing that was the acid at the beginning is going to turn into the conjugate base on the product side. And the thing that was the base at the beginning turns into the conjugate acid on the product side. So our base turns into a conjugate acid, and our acid turns into a conjugate base. I want to talk a little bit more about that curved arrow notation that we just drew in. When we're looking at reactions, this is going to be a new idea for us, that we can take the electrons and reactions, and the electrons are depicted in this flowing type process where an electron or an electron pair is going to come in, it's going to attack something, it's going to abstract something. And this is called curved arrow notation or curved arrows, and we will draw these essentially from now on. This is the first time you're going to see a reaction with curved arrows, but when we get later into the semester and we start seeing reactions, this is what we're going to use to help us predict products.
Remember in general chemistry, when you were predicting products, you were doing things like, you know, double displacement reactions, metathesis reactions, if you called them that instead, you know, simple redox reactions. So these arrows are going to be like that idea where it is what helps you predict what the product is or products of a reaction. I want to show you again some more curved arrows. What happens with these curved arrows is they start at a pair of electrons. This is why it's so helpful when you're first starting to draw in your lone pairs everywhere. So if I start at my oxygen, I'm going to take this pair of electrons, and it could have been any of the pairs on the oxygen, and I'm going to point to the hydrogen that I'm going to pull off. Now, how did I know I was going to pull off that hydrogen? Well, that's a really good question and we're going to get to that in another video like how do i know what's my acid what's my base and what hydrogen i'm removing right now i'm just going to tell you that the hydrogen i'm pointing to is the one that we're removing when we point to this hydrogen the electrons between the oxygen and the hydrogen are going to need to go someplace because this blue arrow is saying lone pair form bond with hydrogen and when it forms that bond with the hydrogen it's just the hydrogen without its electron so it's a proton therefore the pair of electrons that are in the oxygen hydrogen bond needs to go somewhere and they go on to the oxygen this helps us draw the products at the end of this reaction now when i look at my products the hydrogen that got abstracted is now here and the lone pair that went on to the oxygen is now here. Now it really, you could have circled any of the lone pairs on that oxygen because no one really keeps track of them. It's just the fact that you have a third one that showed up. The key here that is very, very different from when you've seen curved arrows in the past is these curved arrows do show movement of electrons. When we were doing resonance and we used curved arrows, those curved arrows were not illustrating movement of electrons. Those curved arrows were used for us to help generate resonance structures. Whereas now, in this curved arrow notation within a reaction, these curved arrows describe movement of electrons, and they are showing the flow of electrons so that we can help distinguish what our product is going to be. This idea of the curved arrows and including them is called a mechanism. When we start using the word mechanism where we say draw the mechanism for the following reaction, what you're going to do is include the curved arrows to help you generate the final products. Here is an example. I'm going to start with my oxygen that's negative and this oxygen is going to pull off a proton. I know that because see how my water goes from water here to OH here. So I'm going to highlight the OH. I'm going to highlight the OH. Right there's a one hydrogen difference. Right, and now we have the hydrogen ending up on the other structure here. When we draw these arrows, I have my pair of electrons pulling off a proton and these electrons going on to the oxygen. Notice how I gave you what the products are. I'm giving you the products and you're practicing drawing in the curved arrows. This is a stepping stone. When you get more practice, you're going to be given two reactants and just be asked to draw in the curved arrows to generate the products. But we're not there yet. It's going to take more time until you're capable of doing that, and it's going to take a lot more practice. So right now, we're using a stepping stone where I give you the reactants and I give you the products, and we draw in the curved arrows to practice with our curved arrows. Here I have an exercise that I want you to try. I want you to add curved arrows to show that flow of electrons in this acid-base reaction. Pause me for a moment and give it a try. I'm going to come back and pretend that you need a hint. If you need a hint, what I want you to look for is where the hydrogen is being added. There's a new hydrogen being added to this oxygen, and notice how we lost a hydrogen on our H3O+. I want you to consider then what pair of electrons is going to form a bond with that highlighted hydrogen. 
So pause me again and see if you can determine the correct arrows to add. What I noticed here is I have a new bond between oxygen and hydrogen. That bond is going to be created from a lone pair on the oxygen. Because remember that the hydrogen is really a proton, meaning it's leaving its electrons behind. So both those electrons on the oxygen are going to come in, they're going to pull off the proton. And then the electrons between the oxygen and the hydrogen are going to swing around and they're going to live on the oxygen. A couple of things about curved arrows. If you're in my class, you need to know that I am really particular about curved arrows. Your curved arrow must start at a lone pair. So you must start your curved arrow at a pair of electrons. A charge is not a pair of electrons. A charge is a discrepancy between electrons and protons. So you may not start your arrow at a charge. In this case, you're starting your arrows at a lone pair, but in the future, you can also start your arrows at a pi bond. Your arrow head has to point to the atom that we are abstracting. And if we look at the second arrow that we've drawn that I'm highlighting in blue, that arrow tail is starting at the middle of a bond. So our curved arrows have to start at a pair of electrons, which is either a lone pair or the middle of a bond. If you are not clear as to where your arrow starts and finishes, on my exams, I will circle those and call them ambiguous and you will not earn points. Some people that teach organic chemistry are a little bit less interested in correct arrows, and that's not my class. Your arrows are what help you figure out what the products are. If you master curved arrows, you can do anything. And that's the goal. Let's do one more exercise. This one is a step harder. I'm actually not really expecting you to be able to do it right now. I just want to see what you can come up with. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that this is your acid and that this is your base. And we can throw in the negative formal charge on the nitrogen. And I want you to add the curved arrows and also see if you can figure out what the products are. So pause me and give that a try. When we look at acid-base reactions, our base has an excess of electron density. And what it's going to do is pull off a proton that's easy to abstract. We don't know yet why this is the proton that's easiest to abstract instead of the protons that are on the ring, but we're going to get to that. So the base ends up taking a pair of electrons and pulling off a proton. Then this bond right here breaks and those electrons go on to the oxygen. When we draw our products, what I want you to do is draw in the skeleton of everything that didn't change. So we'll start with that. What didn't change is that you still have the benzene ring, you still have an oxygen attached to it. And the other thing that didn't change was you have a nitrogen with two hydrogens attached. Now let's add in the lone pairs that didn't change. Your oxygen had one, two, three, four individual electrons already, and your nitrogen had one pair. Now if we look at the arrows, this first arrow is saying form bond with hydrogen. So we're going to have a bond with hydrogen on the nitrogen here. This second arrow that is in blue, that I'm also going to highlight in blue right now, is saying put lone pair on oxygen. So we're going to do that. We're going to put the lone pair on the oxygen. Then we can come in and we can add formal charge. Beautiful.
This is going to take boatloads of practice, so keep working on it. Let's wrap up. In this video, we looked at Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. You want to be able to define what an acid and a base is, as well as pick out in a reaction what is behaving as the acid and what is behaving as the base. In addition to that, you want to be able to label the conjugate acid-base pairs. With more practice, you need to be able to draw the mechanism for simple acid-base reactions and predict the products of those reactions. Thanks for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.